Sylvia Robinson was a woman that, alongside her husband, really laid the groundwork and pioneered turning hip-hop into a business. The record label Sugar Hill was founded in 1979 by husband and wife Joe and Sylvia Robinson. The project received funding from Tony Riviera and Morris Levi, or Morris Levy, the owner of Roulette Records. They released their first record, Rapper's Delight, which most of you are probably familiar with as a song that says, A Hip, A Hop, To The Hippie, in 1979 by the Sugar Hill Gang, which was the first top 40 hip-hop single, and it was 15 minutes long. But what made the label so successful and what led to its inevitable downfall? Sugar Hill was based in Englewood, New Jersey, and it was named after the famed neighborhood in Harlem that was known as a creative outlet for young black artists of the 20s. It was founded by a couple named Sylvia and Joe Robinson. Joe Robinson was a former promotions man, and his wife Sylvia already had a background in music production and as a successful music artist. Her national hit, Love is Strange, as half of the duo Mickey and Sylvia, grew very popular in 1957. At Sugar Hill, the main session band consisted of guitarist Skip McDonald, bass player Doug Wimbish, drummer Keith LeBlanc, and percussionist Ed Fletcher. They were to produce the rhythm for most of the releases. This included Rapper's Delight in 1979. Another release was The Adventures of Grandmaster Flash on the Wheels of Steel in 1981, that showcased the new sound at the time called scratching. We know scratching to be the sound the needle makes when a record moves back and forth, and this was revolutionary for the time. Many of their releases became iconic, and this is why it became such a big influence on hip-hop sound and culture of today. This is despite the allegations that lyrics were stolen, but we'll cover that a little later. Aside from controversies, the influence that this label had was massive, Many record labels began to pop up after it was made. Rappers finally started to commercialize their art and get paid, which was huge. Since this medium was becoming very popular, it would be a matter of time before it became that thing to do. But in order to capture this moment, Sylvia Robinson had a lot of work to do. So she sought out to make Sugar Hill a successful label. Around this time, Rappers were stuck to performing in clubs like Harlem World and Disco Fever in New York. They also rapped at neighborhood block parties, but never commercially. In a 2014 interview with DJ Vlad, it was noted how very few people had managers before Sugar Hill Records. This was what made this record label so vital in developing the commercial aspects of hip-hop. Donna Ward, Robinson's niece, had this to say. What the MCs were doing then was just rapping over music. It was like a party thing. We used to go out to different clubs, and that's all they did. One time, my sister had a birthday party at Harlem World for my aunt Sylvia. She came there and started listening to how they were rapping over the music and made the decision to put it on wax. That's why she brought the three guys together. The three guys she's referring to is the Sugar Hill Gang, which started when Sylvia and Joe set out to ask men if they could rap. They sometimes would ask around on the streets to see if they could find any contenders, Many people referred them to Big Bank Hank, who worked at a local pizza shop at the time. He auditioned on the spot. The next two to come were Wonder Mike and Master G, who happened to be walking by with a friend of Sylvia's. They began recording about a week after that, but it wouldn't be easy. At the time that Sugar Hill Gang started recording, the DJs who served at the stations in the area were not fans of hip-hop music. Apparently, they found it absurd that they were trying to make this push. Back to Donna Ward, who traveled the country and got FaceTime with as many DJs as she could, and it worked. Let's just say, there was a lot of payola going on then. It's been many years, so they're not going to put me in jail now, she jokes. Ward's daughter, Chanel Lady Luck Jones, who was signed to Def Jam in the late 90s, says that her mom is the one who made the song popular. She convinced the DJs to play a 15-minute rap record, She notes that it would have been hard to get them to play a three-minute record. She says, Uncle Joe sent her with the bag, and she went all around the country. I didn't even realize who my mom was until I started working on a documentary about her. I put together a list of DJs and radio stations that she was with, and I was amazed because this lady was really out here doing things. And this was true, because she pulled strings to get this song airplay. And when she finally did, it instantly became a hit. Millions of people rushed to enjoy this new art medium, 
and it was only developing from there. Rapper's Delight was released in September 1979 and it became the first rap song on the radio. It broke on East St. Louis station WESL by a DJ named Gentleman, Jim Gates. It reached number 37 on the Billboard Hot 100, sold over a million copies, and basically catapulted hip-hop into a business. It received great reviews from critics, but the lyrics were met with criticism about where they originated. In that same interview with DJ Vlad, Grandmaster Kaz mentioned that Big Bank Hank, who managed his group, The Mighty Force, was in a position to hear and memorize several of their lyrics. It's claimed that lyrics were stolen, but nothing ever came out of that, and it still had a huge influence on hip-hop music today. After its success, the Robinsons signed acts that were considered to be more authentic, such as The Funky 4 Plus 1, The Treacherous 3, Grandmaster Flash, and The Furious 5, and more over the next few years. They even signed the first female rap act called The Sequence, which featured a young Angie Stone. The label enjoyed many years of success, with 26 gold records. They were also pioneers of the music video. Many productions were made under their label. They were also pioneers of the music video in hip-hop. Many productions were made under their label. Joe Robinson was also very innovative in his business practices. He was the first to produce a cassette single. He continued to work with television network executive Tom Ficar to introduce the Fresh Groove TV series to feature the music videos because MTV would not run them. The success caused MTV to establish Yo! MTV Raps. That would further the spread of rap music through mainstream cable networks. The success came and it went because a controversial distribution deal with MCA Records ended in protracted litigation over a long time, which caused the label to close down in 1986. Rhino Records purchased both the released and unreleased masters that were owned by Sugar Hill. To conclude it all, the studio in Englewood, New Jersey was destroyed by a fire. Many of their hits were recorded there like Rapper's Delight and The Message. The Sugar Hill Gang had a few more hits, but because of money problems in 1984, Wonder Mike had decided to leave, followed by Master G the next year. But the other two decided they weren't done. When the original two members began touring again a decade later, they were faced with legal action from Joey Jr., who claimed that they had no right to use the group name or their MC handles since it wasn't legally theirs. It belonged to his mother, Sylvia. The duo fought this, but it was unsuccessful. They were forced to call themselves Original Sugar Hill Gang, or Rapper's Delight. Joey Jr. also launched lawsuits against Beastie Boys, 50 Cent, and Busta Rhymes for sampling Sugar Hill Gang records. Big Bank Hank died in 2014, and with Joey Jr. passing, it seems that this whole journey may be coming to a close. It was reported in 2013 that Joey Jr. and his two brothers had been charged with tax fraud and were given house arrest and three years probation. A former employee at Sugar Hill Records named Tony Rome explains how the Robinsons added their own children, Joey Jr. and Leland, as co-writers of the Sugar Hill Gang songs, which would position them to gain revenue from their publishing. It's claimed that the Robinsons have made more than $100 million on the Sugar Hill Gang, while Master G and Wonder Mike have both earned less than $250,000 since the release of their first song well over 30 years ago, Rapper's Delight. Joe Robinson Jr. impersonated Master G on stage, trademarked the Sugar Hill Gang name in 2002, and continued on to trademark the names Wonder Mike and Master G in 2005. The two were technically banned from using their own rap names. Joey Jr. even threatened legal recourse against concert promoters who booked them. A documentary is being made about this. Wonder Mike said, this was our opportunity to get our story out, straight from the source. The documentary is called I Want My Name Back and is premiering in Canada February 16th at the Bell Lightbox with a performance by the Sugar Hill Gang to follow. Sugar Hill Records has had a huge contribution to the reason we have hip-hop as well as the hip-hop business today. It's truly the opening of record labels for hip-hop artists. Robinson's last living son, Leland Robinson, says Sugar Hill Records is the best thing to happen to hip-hop. While many contributions were made to this project, Sylvia Robinson was the soul of it, as well as Donna Ward, who helped distribute these tracks and get them played. Sylvia Robinson is set to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the non-performers category in the 2022 class, 
The same class includes Alan Grubman and Jimmy Iovine. Sylvia is regarded as the godmother of the rap recording industry. Leland Robinson continues to say, I'm very pleased that my mother is being recognized. It's a great day and it's been a long time coming. Perhaps she's so iconic because she pushed an outlet for this genre that many disregarded as not being art. Nobody had faith in it at the time and look at where it is now. A film about Sylvia Robinson was announced by Warner Brothers. The project's still in its early stages and it's being taken on by a former editor-in-chief of legendary hip-hop magazine The Source. Sylvia is cited as the woman responsible for pushing the hip-hop genre. Paula Wagner, who acquired the rights to her life story in 2014, will be working on the script with screenwriters. There's been plenty of media out there to represent the legend behind the record label. There are many sides to this story, some of which we haven't even gotten all the sides to yet, especially the general hip-hop public. Some praise their legacy, and others have more of a negative outlook towards it. Either way, there's no doubt that they made a dent on the hip-hop industry and solidified a lot of the practices that we would go on to see. Sugar Hill was the first hip-hop record label company, and it turned out to be a great success. But its downfall was inevitable, and there was no saving the project. It opened the gates, though, for artists to share their work and sell it. And this was revolutionary for the time because rappers were stuck doing neighborhood performances and barely scraping by any money. This wasn't even seen as a money-making opportunity back then. But thanks to Sugar Hill, it's become a place where we have artists today earning in the hundreds of millions of dollars.